so the question is why doesn't he grow up why does he still behave as a child how can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> Recording again, and uh, we're in the future. We fucked up. Well, we didn't. We, we didn't fuck up. Didn't oh, we did. Um, yeah, radical openness. Yeah, I was talking to someone at the gym the other day. Radical yeah. openness, just Same. being uncomfortably honest. People like that shit. Yeah. Um, I was talking to someone at the gym the other day, and friend Jonathan, and I was just blatantly honest. And I have friends who don't want me to be as honest. Like they're embarrassed for me for whatever reason. They're like, no, no, you're okay. It's like, like, um, like I have a really hard time finishing with girls. Like I just don't come. It just doesn't happen ever. It's very it just fucking doesn't happen. And uh, my buddy's like, sorry, man. We're like, don't like, worry. Like he's embarrassed for me, and I can see it. I'm like, why do you care? Because I don't. Like, and I was just being open about like it. Like he someone. didn't want to talk about it. No, he didn't. He, he was didn't scared. want that to you be know, a you know. uh, topic of discussion. Because it's no, 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 we can't talk about this. We can't, we can't. Yeah. It's like no, dude, I have a broken there's dick. A, it's uh, broken. My dick is broken. It's fine. I'm cool with it. There's <laughs> a guy. It's, it's yeah, like, I know. Like, but people don't want to act scared. like that's a normal part of life. Honesty is terrifying. That's fucking life, dude. Like, I, I just had this client. You know, just you to know be clear, I could have sex. It just can't come. It's okay, everybody. <laughs> just to be clear, I get a boner. I just can't come. It's all right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you're um, fine. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. That's very funny. You just need you need to throw that non-disclosure out there. Like, if if oh, there yeah. are any ladies listening, I just get so bone. you know, yeah, I'm good. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> pretty confident. I'll take. Pretty I'm confident. the one that suffers. In fact, it will be okay. My microphone. I don't even decorated. mind. What? So my microphone's decorated what in my are sexual you doing? Balance. Look at you. You'll probably get laid because of this. I hope so. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great for you. Yeah. What, what about your client? So I had this client, oh, you know, so this. Awesome. and like, it became clear. I was, I was kind of helping this guy from the beginning, and he was doing pretty well. He started like gaining some momentum. He was doing, he was doing pretty good. He was still kind of a huge pussy, but like <laughs> much less. Mm, I'm not even gonna go as far as say much, like a little bit less than he was when he started and that's not you're not being rude when you say that a lot of people most people it takes a good four or five years of continuous training before they stop being bitches and i mean i'm not like i was also a bitch but when i was going through that i was between the years of eight and 12 so i got out of way early and when you get these guys that are like 40 Going through it between the ages of 40 and 44, it's more embarrassing. They don't want to talk about it because they honestly are, they're in the most basic childish stage of exercise that exists. They can, they're like baby gazelles with, <laughs> you know, they can barely lift a bowling ball yeah, off the 30, ground. 30, and and uh, they don't want to uh, address that. They don't want to address that and they don't want to address how big of a, bitch that they let themselves right. become it's, it's and the reality failure is, yes they they've they've gotten there and and they get so deluded in this state that they believe that the reason that they are such bitches is not because of anything they did but rather they weren't um they weren't exercising correctly <laughs> oh no, those correct form guys <laughs> well no no he's not even a correct form guy but like he believes that like oh the reason i'm 300 pounds mm. is that i should have my chest up a little bit more and when <laughs> i do uh, a dumbbell row you know what i mean like he's like he's gone so deep oh, that he thinks that's what makes the difference that's what matters what matters isn't that the matter what matters is being willing to see what you're capable of no. every single session and trying to challenge that line. 
so that every single day you are measuring yourself uh, against yourself and trying to approve upon yourself. Yeah. That is the hardest thing about training, and that's what they don't even want to talk about oh, dude. because that means that they it is their responsibility. It, it means it's not your responsibility. It's not the gym's responsibility. It's not the form. It's not the correctness. It's mine, it's and they don't want you. to fucking hear that. You know what the you know what the problem is too the big barrier that people have when it comes to really fucking committing to their training, when you work out hard like really fucking hard and you do it right and you're on a proper program let's say you're with a trainer or not doesn't matter when you get to that breaking point when you're training you're basically being okay with the idea that you might die yeah. in that session yeah I've had back squat days where I said okay I'm gonna die here but I'm gonna die strong. Yeah, and you have but to I'm gonna okay. die going for it. You have to be okay with that. And if you're not okay getting to that breaking point and then going farther than you ever thought you could, you will never be successful, yeah. ever, with anything. Dude, Especially I, I, tend, in the goddamn I tend to think of a lot of things as a spectrum. You know what I mean? Like, the, there's not a lot of black and white. There's not a lot of lines in the sand. This is one of those things in life where there is a line in the sand. There's a very clear line in the sand. And a across bitch. this line, the, it lies the unknown, lies p potential death, injury, fear. It's a place that you've never been. It's a place you've never allowed yourself to go. You've never allowed your physical limit to cross this this line in the sand, and you don't know what's over 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 that line. It's terrifying. So, like, once you do that, it's terrifying. Once you do it, once you get there and you realize that you're okay and you have just expanded your ability, yeah. you've literally grown in an instant because you have crossed the line and said. Oh, it's okay here too. Yep. It's okay here. And you just did that. And that's what makes the difference every single day. Going to that uncomfortable place and realizing that you could have done it all along. Yeah. Now you have some people that they, they go up to the line and they're literally deluding themselves into thinking there's nothing on the other side of that line. Yeah. I'm just gonna like take a step to the left and do this form a little bit more correctly. <laughs> Or, okay, I'm just going to take a step to the left. I'm going to pay an extra $50 per session uh, for my personal trainer yes. so I get a really good personal trainer that can yeah, do this. So okay, I'm going to take a step to the left and say, oh, yeah, it, the reason I'm not doing it is that, that we, well, my trainer didn't show up yesterday. Yeah. He didn't, Which, and and I guess it's all over. This is all in reference so, to a, a it's person. It's probably client. your fault, Jim. You know, yeah. it's a, the gym's fault. Uh, I want my money back. Uh, how dare you? You know, you should you should feel terrible about yourself. Yeah. And that's where these guys will always live. Yeah. Until they are willing. And we all do it to a degree with certain things. Absolutely. S some of us, I Absolutely. know I do with certain things, but that's Careers, what fucking girls. makes champions. You breaking through. Like, get comfortable in that unknown. Yep. Get fucking awesome. It. Like, attack that bitch. And once you realize that you're a lot, a lot of people don't fucking realize how strong they are. A lot of people just don't know how fucking strong they are. Once you realize that, you in a you, lot of ways. You want more. In a lot of ways, too, Everywhere. right? Like, not just physical strength, yeah. but, like, emotional strength, like, dealing with breakups, dealing with, like, uh, diff difficult emotional issues yeah. with whatever it is that you're going going through. Like, it requires a very, like, tough mind to address the truth of the situation. Yeah. Like, like how, many, how many of us know that guy or that girl that, like, really thinks that, they're the, the the girl or guy they're seeing just really loves them but you can see clear as day Woo! you can that's see a, clear as day that they're just being played that's a doozy just being played and like it's like they're Ooh. not addressing the very obvious problem here that that this person doesn't care about your well-being that's a sad person they, i think they i think most of the time they know I think it's just a block of course they, they do but they're not addressing it block that shit. it's the same it's the same shit as a training it's oh. like it, admitting it, crossing that line of like truth is so scary that they're l intentionally. <laughs> well, it's loss of control. How many people do you run into? I run into a lot because I fucking love psychedelics and I talk about it a lot. So when people talk to me about it, they're like, yeah, I, I would love to do mushrooms or ayahuasca or fucking San Pedro. But I just I hate losing control. You know, I don't like having control, you know. And I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? You live on a giant spinning ball of uh, in space going 2,000 miles an hour spinning around a giant nuclear bomb. What control do you have ever? You've never had control. You literally came out of another human not that long ago. What 
fucking control do you have? Shut up. Take the drug. Learn. Like, it's. It, I don't understand this control. Dude, they live in these so little true. bubbles. I want to go back to my cubicle and just think by myself. It's like, no, dude. There is no control. You know what's weird, it's too, man? the most freeing thing in the world once you realize that. When you're being really honest about shit, yeah. like, everything in life tends to get better. Oh, that's tasty. Starting to get good? Oh, it's fucking tasty now. It, isn't it weird how bourbon, like... Not just bourbon, but like whiskey. Mm. The more you drink it, the mm. more delicious it starts mm. to taste. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. It's very strange. I think they plan that out. Maybe. Well, like the Blue Label. You ever drank Blue, oh, Blue Label? So good. One time. So like, so fucking good. the more, you, like at first you're like, mm, this is just a very smooth, delicious whiskey. But then over time, it becomes way more than that. It becomes about? like. You're about to go on something. Oh, dude, I got way off time. It doesn't matter. It's a fucking now. Blue Label. It's delicious. Blue Label. Yeah, it's fucking delicious. Dude, um, whiskey recommendation to any of the listeners out there, all two of you. Um, Angel's Envy whiskey. Angel's Envy. Holy fuck. Fucking great. If you just like good things, buy it. Yeah. It is good. It doesn't matter. Dude, I uh, I was playing uh, PlayStation Online uh, yesterday. I made, I made a few uh, friends and played. Like we played, we were playing uh, How Grand awesome Theft is Auto. That? It's so fucking fun. Dude, make online friends. Like we, we there's real. three of us, and we just played for like two hours. And the other two dudes were really nice. Mm. Like they were young. I think they were from Kentucky. Shout and oh, and they said they'd watch our 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 show. That's awesome. What's up, so, guys? So like What's yeah, their they, names? they asked for my uh, my uh, YouTube channel, and I gave them this one. So awesome. if they actually listen to this, like you guys hilarious. are great. I it was like it, I think uh, we've got. It's Monster Energy 54. <laughs> what? What? Come on, man. You couldn't think of a better name than dude, that? Leave him alone. He's really cool. All right, really sorry. cool dude. All right. So they were like really nice. You know, they were like, it was like a sweet sort of like. How old are they? Probably not that. Probably, I'm going to go you with know, like 19? 17, 16, 17. I'm guessing. Young kids. Though. I didn't ask. And um, I think they were like really like I kept. Asking them like where they lived. Mm. Well, I didn't ask them really. I'm like, where are you guys from? Yeah. Like I was trying to figure out like you know what their accents were like and all that. And like they were reluctant to like. Oh, they were nervous. They were still in that phase of oh, stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I get they it. Were, they were like kids. really, you know, you could tell like they didn't. They cursed a little bit, but like they laughed at that that they were <laughs> cursing. You know what I mean? It was like kind of like funny. They sound like awesome and uh, they, yeah, they were like really cool, man. And. uh and yeah, they said they follow our YouTube channel. So all right, Monster Energy, you're the man. Monster Energy, and and, and, and the other was like NHL fan, sixty eight. They were great. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just but dude, the, people don't realize that can be a lot of fun, dude. I I've told I don't know if I've told you this. My best friend to this day, does I'm, he watch this? Yeah, Ever? he does. Does friend, he watch Evan? All right, his name Evan. is Evan. My best friend, whom I didn't grow up with. I met him in World of Warcraft, my best friend, to this day. Like, he was, his name is Evan, lives in wow. Florida. We met, we were, I was 13, he was 14. I played WoW every day, religiously. And he was in my guild. He was in my guild at the time. I was in one of the best guilds, no big deal, on my server. Like, top three guild out of a lot of people. Dude. Yeah, best is friend. It a, so, so, there's good. All let right, keep talking. Finish, keep finish, talking. Let me finish. Let me finish. I know. So, from 13... To, to to 19, no, to, to 18. 13 to 18, I played video games with this dude every day. We played online. We would Skype and play with, we would Skype with a group of people and all play the same game together so we could communicate better. We played GTA, mostly World of Warcraft. Like, it, it, we ended up switching systems entirely to Xbox only. We only. And then we started playing Halo and shit together. As like, a group. As a group. We all moved together <sighs> as a group. <laughs> It was like it was like five it was a people. Gang. It was a gang. It was five people whom we've never met in person. He actually ended up dating one of the girls in the group. He ended up dating them, like her. Like he met her in person. Then she moved to Florida. Like all this shit. Um, not together anymore. Uh, <laughs> but Evan, me and Evan, we stayed friends. He came up to New York a couple, like a like a year, like last summer. And me and him, like he stayed at my house. We just bullshitted all. Like we went through all cities, getting drunk and high, and just like hanging out. He's one. He's like a brother to me. And it's so crazy because we, when we first met, we were both fat kids who hated themselves and just played these video games as an escape. And, and so, okay. And now I'm a personal trainer, and he's a kiteboard and surfer instructor. Right. 
Like we just we've been just been growing as humans together. Cool guy. Cool so level. here's here's the thing, man. You don't play World of Warcraft anymore. No, I don't. I wish. Why? Oh, I'm, I'm addicted. I can't. Have one. No <laughs> but, shit. It's like, like heroin. I can't. Yeah, but like it. It did such good things for you. Like it may introduced you to these friends. It probably like yeah. made you it also uh, take me feel. Too much time. It oh. became a bad thing. Right. It became a good thing because I needed the socialization. So can it be a good kid. thing? Oh yeah. Well, I needed it. I was thirteen when you I just first needed started. It at the I was time. fat. I had no friends in real yeah. life. I hated everything. You needed that. And then I had made a community, like a people whom I genuinely love. I yeah. love Evan. I love Taylor and uh, Tyler. Her name is. And uh, we called him Blackie because he was the one black guy, but. He's, he's but you could you were that close. Oh yeah, for sure. That, like everybody was calling the only black guy Blackie, yeah. and the black guy was like, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. my because he's one of our best friends. He lived. He's from Oklahoma. That's that's the tight knit group, dude. It was awesome. It was so awesome. It was the best thing ever. Every day there wouldn't be a day where we wouldn't someone wasn't talking to each other. We'd Skype, uh, we'd text all day. We, we had like these group chats all throughout the what day. What age period was this for you? From thirteen to eighteen. I bit, wow, I went, that's a like very formative years. Yeah, absolutely. I became a, like a human during these years, and they were there with, during the ride. Evan, now he's on the same. He's on the he's on the level. Evan's all about yeah. He loves. He's like oh, I did DMT once, and like he's he's all about like being better as a human being. Like he's that's why I love the dude. Like we ended up just growing in the same route. Tyler became the same. She ended up being like a fucking tattoo artist and very free loving person. Dude, like awesome. it or not. Doing psychedelics seems to be fucking really important to being cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, like, like you it, know what it, it is? haven't you found that? You know what it is? Because like, it's not always the case. I know a lot of people that are very cool that have never done psychedelics. Right. But I feel like m- there's a higher percentage of cool people that have done psychedelics. Absolutely. Like, so if you divide the world into cool and uncool, the cool group. I would say it would have like an 80% psychedelic rate. Yeah. You know, Not, you, so you don't have to, to be cool. And you no, don't, no, you don't have just cause, and there's a lot of douchebags that do psychedelics too. So like not to say that that exi- but I, I would willing to bet that be, I'd be willing to bet that they like, I would 80% of cool people have <laughs> explored the idea of there being more to the, life. Of the than unknown. This. It's, it's what it is. It's, it's, you willing because everyone's hung up on that fiber. a lot of people hung up on the idea of control yeah. and if you're a very sane and normal and thought you know a thoughtful person like you know you are or i like to think that i am but you still do psychedelic like you go and do psychedelics you're willing to give up everything that you think might Whoa, be true you're willing cool to, to give up the very paradigm and foundation of your <sighs> thought processes for the idea of benefiting yourself and that is terrifying it's the same reason why homeboy doesn't want to work out that hard because he has to change everything it's bravery it's courage that's why you have to be brave that's why we're drawn to those people that's why you know because they're brave i tell people like last weekend someone that's brave is easily to it's easier to trust someone who's brave than somebody who isn't because it requires honesty well and it also like you can trust that they're gonna do the right thing longer they're going to do the right thing even as it gets harder to do. You know, their their threshold to give up and sell out, yep. your threshold yep. to, like, uh, take the easy road is much higher. You know, somebody who's willing to, like, fight for their life it's in a ring. a demonstration ring, of character. You know, like, no. you can trust that that person's not just going to get corrupted by... Yeah. the easy things or, like, the, the money and stuff and... You know the fake. You know it's thing. another psychedelic. Like it's not. It's not. It has nothing to do with like drugs or whatever. Like it's what, like my brother Joey. I love him to bits. My brother Joey is a professional mixed martial arts fighter. It's what he does for a living. Right. Joey, if you want to break that down, my brother trains his body every day in the arts of dis- of dismantling other humans, and then not only that, he's also training physically every day. Like, he no- snatches, o lifts, hard power training, and then he gets in a ring and combats another human being. He's letting go of the idea of control and thrives in the unknown. He's letting go of the idea of his life. He thrives Every time he gets... in the idea that he might die. Dude, he, he could thrives. die. So my brother, Joe, he has a very strong character. And that's what people are drawn to. Like when I, I told someone, you know, I last weekend I did watch Huma or San Pedro. Like I basically took a, one of the world's most powerful psychedelics and went on a trip for 13 hours. Right. I tell people that and they're like, oh my God. Like, yeah, for thir- are you okay? It's for like, 13 yeah, yeah. hours, you... I went to the real world. The disappeared. real world. I went to the real world, as I think what happened. But 
And I came back with a lot of lessons. And when you tell people something like that, they get terrified. They're so scared because everyone knows that at the very root of them, there's this issue they're not wanting to deal with. So we're just gonna well, you're you're a loose away. cannon. They can't control you. They can't. They don't know what to do <laughs> with you. They you are not predictable. Like they want predictability. They want to know that that what well, this will happen if you do this, and you're gonna wear this outfit to work this day, and you're gonna talk this way when you are sp- talking to your superior, and you are going to get a wife at this time, and you are going to get no. have a baby at this time, and you are never gonna act out, and you, you are never the going. They want to know that you are predictable, and when when you give your your whole fucking view of the world up instantly yeah. and you could fucking lose it. Like you could yeah. totally switch. You might stay there. You might like uh, just totally yeah. go off the rails. That unpredictability is people. terrifying to people. Like what if you just take it and you jump out a window? What if you yeah, take maybe. it? You, and, and the reality is, yes, that has happened. Yeah. That is me, a risk. They tell like me all you, the time. You, you, you can't be for sure what your experience is going to be with these things, but you're looking around, you're saying, okay, I am noting that it seems like the people that have gone on this journey, more cases than not, or at least to a degree that I'm safe with, have come back with lessons that are worth the risk. Oh, yeah. So you make that jump. You make that that decision to go into the unknown. And it's not like their their fears aren't, you know, justifiable in a way. Like, they, they you know, people tell me all the time, oh, I'm so scared to do something like that. And I, my my response every time is, yeah, you should be. Yeah. Because everything you think to be true is going to be challenged. And a lot of those things... It might break you down, You're man. not... It did. I uh, I wept for hours on Watch Huma. Like a child. And you're already pretty opened up to the possibility of anything. So, yeah. like, to have something that's so goddamn yeah, profound on open. you that it's going to make you break down and cry... Imagine some of the people that we know uh, that are so caught up in like yeah, I, the how the oh, realness hello, of the world. So this is, like, do you yeah. imagine how dramatic that that shift could be? Like, oh. not just we're not talking tears. It would we're almost be bad. Months of like fucking yeah. trying to go back to the shit you had to deal with when you were a baby, yeah. and like relearn that you don't know as much as you think you do, memories. and you have to deal now with the possibility of this being a yeah. reality. You have to deal with the possibility of this being a reality, and like. You, it could, you could lose months of your life, like yeah. just like recovering from that. And it's really that. fucking good and for you, I think. I agree with you. I think that, like, it, you know, if you, it's like anything else. Like, if you let it build up long enough, it's going to take longer to clean it away. Yeah. But you're all better after it's cleaned away. And, like, it, it, to me, like, a lot of these psychedelic experiences are like mental scrubbers. <laughs> it's like, I, I get, lens. yeah, I'll get in the sensory deprivation tank. And I'll come out and I'll feel light. I'll feel clean, like just like you did. Like you, you, you did Wachuma, and uh, you came back and you saw. I, f- I feel cleared out. Like yeah. I feel like I got rid of baggage. I feel like Dude. less tied to things. I feel more uh, never... connected to the moment of oh, right yeah. now. I feel much more in tune with the other uh, energy around me it's and people made around me. me. Be- everything's better. I'm a so, better human being. Yeah. So like, there seems to be. Just like there is training and keeping your body physically fit, there there seems to be a uh, a method of optimizing your consciousness using the tools of psychedelics as training methods. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Like oh, yeah. you, you, we at the beginning of strength training. Can you imagine what people are saying? They were like, that has got to be so bad for you. Oh, How yeah. could you pick up Don't that, that weight? That is, you Don't are that just going to break down and be destroyed. Dude, people say that now. Right. I have a friend who right. still messages me on Instagram. I'll so, post a, a back squat video. She's like, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. I'm like, I that do is, this so I never hurt myself. And the thing is, we've had... A lot of time now to evaluate and look and see what happens when someone risk. does squats. What Worth happens it. when someone does this? And not only that, we're starting to figuring out the dosages. We're starting to figure out, like, this is what you need to get, have this happen. This is what you need to have this happen. Right now, we're in a state with psychedelics where we're still, everybody's kind of like, mm. you're going to hurt yourself. We don't know anything about it. But, yeah. like, now, as like studies are starting to come out, it's starting to show that, okay, if you have PTSD, 
MDMA in a controlled setting with a psychotherapist seems to be like 90% effective. And psilocybin. Both. Psilocybin is really good for like depression, anxiety, addiction, blah, blah, blah. Like we it's have figured out confirmed. that these, yeah, it's like the very beginning of training. Like what we're doing right now, fucking 50 years down the road, they're going to be like, oh, like these were the very first like, yeah. like Jack LaLanne, like, <laughs> Who I don't even know. Like who's pre Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know, who was who were the first guys like at circuses? Uh, who's that, who that dude that, <laughs> that dude? were like lifting up welded barbells? Yeah, like, you know, the, like the giant on one hand. Spherical weights. The human, and the triangle yeah. weights. The triangle weights. <laughs> like they're gonna look they'll look back Steak at our and eggs. I get, and dude, eggs. I guarantee look, like, dude, we have twenty two subscribers right now. One day this shit, really? No, I don't. I think oh, I. Okay. It's even more than we. I was excited, <laughs> <laughs> but like I think uh, down the road, like one day they're gonna look back and they're gonna be like, yeah, there's a few of these whack jobs that actually saw it coming. Yeah, and and yeah. they like they were the ones that were like also participating in this sort of like realization that you can train your we're consciousness. For, we're forerunners. You can train we're your brain. Yeah. You can train your view of the world in a similar fashion to the way that you train your body. And and there was a very few group, small group of dudes that experimented with this very potent oh, yeah. marijuana that was developing <laughs> out of Denver, Colorado, and and the the medical mar marijuana of uh, California. You know, they're gonna say like uh, this shit was really powerful, yeah. and it, there was about a few dozen groups yeah. here that like really started seeing shit. Like when people like when my kids <laughs> or grandkids ask me like. You did watch Chuma in 2014. That's going to be the reaction. Like you had no idea what was going on. Well, you don't know what they're going to no, what they're going to say is like they're going to be like you did watch Chuma in the same way that you like you did squats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like so what? Like, yeah, like it, no it, big deal. Yeah, it'll this be like, it'll be a very common thing. I think it'll be refined out and it's, like in a, a very normal part of development to optimizing right. your your and it'll, it'll be mind funny. and body. Like yeah, kids, I had yeah. to meet a strange man yeah. from Peru, right. a shaman he called himself, <laughs> in the middle of the forest in upstate New York, and take this in a cabin. Yeah. Right. But we'll be no like <laughs> like, like watch. We'll be old fucking geezers one day getting <laughs> interviewed on in some sort of future. <laughs> technology being like yep back in the day me and my buddy alec we Mr. used to have to stick this marijuana into this box here and then we get on the microphones because it used to be that you had to get this big setup here with a microphone and i had we didn't have wireless electricity ears. then we uh, like you're we gonna we're gonna be these old men and they're gonna there be like wires everywhere. How did you do it? And we're like, oh, we don't know. We yeah. just uh, we you know we just part in good participated yes. in that. In that. <laughs> Mr. Fields, Mr. Fields, you and Alec, uh, he's no longer with us. God bless his soul. But Alec Pagan, <laughs> I don't know why I'm dead in this, but I am. Uh, you and Alec Pagan did made a podcast about drugs experimenting back in 2014. What was that like? But they won't even call it drugs. They'll, 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 it'll be like quote unquote drugs. Thing. What we know now is medicine. There will be yeah. There will be kindergartners like getting certain amounts of things. Like they'll figure it out. Just like they have like kids at gym class. Like you know they'll figure it out. I bet you anything. Two thousand eighty when we get interviewed, <laughs> interviews will still talk like this. How's it going? I'm Jim Hansen. <laughs> no, like they they're, they're totally gonna do it. They I, won't. I they bet, won't even. Bet, it'll bet. be like some sort of like virtual reality, <laughs> like unplugged to everything, like sensors around us yeah. and then in our body. We're like, gonna live in the matrix. Weird. Like, uh, did you? Did, I was, you know what I was watching yesterday that like freaked me the fuck out. Fuck. Oh man. Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I was I watching don't this watch last it night, enough, but it, apparently it's funny. Oh, it's a wonderful show. So what freaked me out was the uh, the episode I was watching was from 2006, 2005, 2006. Uh, one of those two. I don't really remember. And like, the technology, even then. It was like a Razor phone. Like, what the fuck dude, there were still on? flip phones. Very common. Still the cameras that would go over your shoulder. Like, like weird. And I was thinking, I'm like eight years ago. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, "That's really weird." Yeah. <laughs> like, like th that's a different. That's a different. Oh, they still had newspapers, so the internet Whoa, wasn't yeah, like. It wasn't as prevalent. Well, they, they they still have newspapers now, but like. No one fucking remembers it. They there was a mo okay. This was the defining moment. They had uh, they were doing a bit on the gang goes jihad, and somebody asked them about what's going on in Israel. Mm. Nobody fucking knew. 
because like news hadn't expanded oh, to like people like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you, you didn't have iPhones. You didn't, you, didn't you couldn't get the yeah. news on your phone. Like you couldn't, that didn't exist. So the, the, where you got the news, you had to sit and read this mu- newspaper yeah. still in 2006. That's awful. You know, you know, it's a now rare. dumbasses fucking know what's <laughs> going on. Dude, like we are, let's be honest. We're not like 2006. We weren't reading the newspaper. I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, it, like, let's just say, it's like, let's just say that's what's going on now. Like, even at our ages now, mm. we wouldn't be reading the newspaper. We'd be making like dick jokes and like oh, talking yeah. about like. I would be like, I need to go make a collect some call. Some funny guys. I need to go make. A, I need to go make a collect <laughs> call real quick. I need, yeah, I need to go. We, we'd be <laughs> use a payphone. We'd be make a collect call. We'd be talking about like. Uh, Oh, The Bachelor. The Bachelorette or Bullshit. some shit. Yes. Dude, you see last the Jersey Shore. The, that fucking whore. Yes. <laughs> like we yeah, some, that was the media we were that dudes. we were getting. I was that guy. Right. That guy. Or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, mm. which is like a funny show, but South it's Park. like, it's South Park. Yeah. You know like where I learned most of my news show. as a kid, as a young boy? South Park. South Park. Yeah. yeah I'm so, like, oh, that's what's happening. But like now, fuck, everybody's getting news, like whether they like it or not. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's just getting, out there. it's just getting blasted at you from if every If you're angle. alive today and you live in the United States, you have States, to know what's going you're on. You're on the internet like, all day. Whether you recognize yeah. it or not, you're yeah. on Instagram, you're on Twitter, yeah. you're on Facebook, yeah. you're on Friendster, yes. whatever the fuck you're still using. <laughs> like, oh, name drop. Um, this is you're so on fun. This. This, is this is the funnest podcast we've ever done. I think it's because we're drinking. We're I just, think we just need to do this every time. Yeah, we do. It makes it better. It's so obvious. Maybe that'll become our show. Rudy was like, <laughs> when I told him drink we drank a bottle of, of, J- of J- JJ. Of anything. When I told Rudy Busamante, uh, guest number 10, check it, guest number nine, check it out, folks. Um, when I told him we drank with your doctor friend when he was on the podcast and we had a blast, he was mad. He was oh, like, really? Like, Are you fucking serious? You tell me we could have got drunk and had a great time and done that? What the fuck? <sighs> like, and I don't blame him. He's right. He's goddamn right. The best goddamn moments are right. definitely going to be when we're fucked up. Especially with Rudy. Rudy goes deep. I think that's why I don't like the, uh, Joe Rogan's show as much anymore. He doesn't go, he doesn't go crazy anymore. Remember when he would just get drunk exactly. and super he's, fucking... I love you, Joe. I love him but too, dude. You, you, he's and, professional and my, now. My lifelong dream goal would be to, like, to be on his show. I want him to be on our show. Ooh, I want him on so our show. That's my All right, goal. I'm going with you. Yeah, I want him on, to have him our, on our show. show. Um, but... God damn, he's so professional now, and, I, and he <laughs> he's couldn't he couldn't stop the momentum. Not, not he couldn't totally. Stop it. No, not he totally is, though. He's got like three people working for him. He has all these bookers <laughs> and staff, guests being paid. He has, dude. You know things. how much this show makes it, an episode? I bet you. I looked it up. I bet you it makes. What's your guess per episode? Per episode, Joe Rogan makes three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> three hundred thousand dollars. That's what Joe Rogan makes. All right, am I off by a little bit? Just a little bit? I want you to pull out your calculator. <laughs> okay. Just pull it out. It's out. Type in 300,000 times 550. Type it. It uh, 300,000 times 550. What number was it? I, I fucked up. That's my fault. 100. Wait, is that what it was? Yeah. I feel like that is that might even be low. Times 550. 300,000. That's what it is. 165. Do you think he fucking has made $165 million from this podcast? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. No. That's a lot of money. I mean, like. I was mostly joking, but I wasn't. What do you think he made? What, 10 grand an episode? It's an 11,000. Yeah, it's 11,000 yeah. episode. I figured it would advertise but, it. And, uh, Eleven thousand an episode. Yeah. There's no fucking company, corporation. Like That's he what just I'm saying, dude. He eleven thousand dollars. He couldn't episode. stop them, and I don't blame him. He's he, getting paid. He's getting paid. <laughs> he's, homeboy's making bank. Well, because because the realization, how much was he getting paid at when they were doing flashlight commercials in the first hundred episodes? Oh, he's probably making like five hundred bucks. A week. Maybe not even that. Not yeah, that a much. week. A week. Like from maybe. like a few different episodes. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like he yeah. wasn't. He was just like us. Who's a regular dude? Right. Better, but. right, dude? How much would we suck if we made ten grand an episode? Oh my god, I I just suck a dick on. We him. would be such losers. No, we would. <laughs> no, we would. <laughs> we would totally be losers because we would. Nah, eh, I don't know. No. 
I don't know. Give me Here's enough the mushrooms. Thing. Are are we? Give me enough right. mushrooms and I'll be all right. Alec, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this right now. Let's do it. <laughs> Where's our limit gonna be, bro? Like, what's enough? I like that you bring what's that up. What's the Chappelle? Because guess, what? What's, guess what? We have a limit. We just. We, I think you're do. right. I think we, we absolutely you, do. We have a limit, and I think like we. Have I don't want to be famous. On, this is like a will in a way, yeah. because if if we get past a point, it's like clear. Like, there's no dispute. We're not like drink your alcohol, Kyle. Dude, stop, man. We're not stopping. We're finishing this. Man. All right, you're a crazy fuck. All right, um, so you, you know, like Dave Chappelle moment, yeah. like like he walked away. I'm not talking about like us getting paid fifty million dollars, but like. I do think I know, it's I know important that we probably say, just I, for the record, this would probably never even be aired, but just for the record, <clears throat> how much per episode do we have to make before we absolutely do not make any concessions in the way that we do our show at the cost of anybody else? Meaning, like, we'll... Oh, we wouldn't go any more, any longer on commercials. We wouldn't change when we do commercials. We would not approve certain commercials because we think the company's stupid. Uh, like, what's our top dollar number? Like, it's it'd be like as a trainer saying, "I'm never doing more than 25 sessions a week because I don't, I will not overdo it." You know what I mean? I don't want that stress. I don't want it to get to that point. Here's the thing, aren't our number, I think, is very low. I do too. I think if if me and you were to ever make anywhere near, let's let's say three grand an episode, if we would ever make that. An so episode, we were making fifteen hundred an episode. We'd probably be doing three a week. Three a week. That. That's what I'm saying. Two or three a week. If we All made right, so that's three forty five. Wait, what'd you say? Three grand an episode? Yeah. So it's nine grand a week. It's forty five hundred a person a week times. Four, it's about eighteen grand for what? Yeah, for a month. A month. Yeah. Times twelve. Yeah, we never go past that. <laughs> Ever. That's a hundred thousand dollars each. Yeah, and some change. Sold. Done. So our our limit. Done deal. Right now we're at zero. Mm, zero dollars. But our That's limit. Not, we got Bitcoin once. Yeah, we did. Well, we have a little bit then. So if we go over the equivalent of uh, uh, 1500 an episode. Mm. That's what we said, right? 3,000. 3,000 an episode. If we ever go, we, we will never go over 3,000 an episode, no matter what. Yeah, this, well, if we end up, no, nah, I would. I would. I'd go. No, wait. I was thinking of it in is like, su- in sub- subscribers. This is what happens when we get this drunk, though. It's I'm fine. starting to get fucked. Drink more. Drink more. Get in the same level. You're good. All, All right. right. If so we wait. were to have like five, let's let's this think of it in terms of subscribers. If we were to ever get like say five hundred thousand subscribers, do you know how many fucking people that is? That's a lot of people. That's a fucking You'd make a million. They're a television show. <laughs> That's the thing. You're not you're okay. Not wait. So we're having the wrong conversation because we're trying to limit how much money we make. Yeah. What we need to be talking about is what sort of concessions we'll ever make. All right. Because concession one, number many, one, we might lose our minds. This one we'll never do. Hmm. I will never read script for a commercial. Yeah, we always have to improvise on it. You will allow me to, to rate your product. Talk about it however I want to. Yeah. But I will never ever ever for any amount of money read the words that you want me to say. With us today we have Jack Daniel's <laughs> Rogan whiskey. Does that. Rogan. Distilled and bottled by Jack. No, go fuck yourself. Rogan it's does just it. delicious. He does it every so often. And, and he, hates he it. like he, calls he hates it out. so much he that he's like, out. I'm just like gonna warn you right now, they like make me say this. Like it I like it's part of the contract that I have to say it this way. <laughs> So <laughs> and then he'll re say it. Stupid. And it's like, oh, okay, I don't ever want to have to do that. If you're a company that wants me to read something exactly the way you put it, I will never go fuck yourself. Yeah, so you're not so, the company I like. Just so we understand now, Alec and I just made a contract that we would never do that ever. Ever. And ever. It's stupid. Have, so acting and yeah. So also, we, we are not we will never legally allowed to change our opinion on this. Would we'll you never it? read script? Did you call it a constitution? Is that what you said? No, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe. That was rule one. That was rule one. Rule two, we will never lie. Yes. We I will never lie. I will never lie for you. For you, for a company, for 
even ourselves. I'm I never will gonna lie. tell you what I honestly believe about. We may have products that I don't think are very good. And you know how I'm going to do it? I'm going to say this product, I don't think it's that good. I think this is where it probably fits in the market. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be like, this, this, this is probably is the best one. This is, this is uh, sorry, that was my It's all good. Yeah, uh, no, this one's probably like a little bit cheaper. You know, it's, it's good for this sort of situation. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's really good but if I'm you're a college student. If you're a yeah, college you're right. student, it's great. Never gonna lie, never. Never gonna lie on here. Fuck you Give for thinking that. that I, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, these are these are fun. I want to have a big one. Day. Big what? Many <laughs> angle. <laughs> I want to decorate mine with condoms. That's my goal. You do. You win. Yeah. You already did. But I want more. <laughs> Why? Like, you could do that now. I, you could yeah. just go get condoms. You should do that, dude. I woke up today. Yeah. Um, no, last night. You ever wake up with a condom on your dick? Mm-hmm. That's the worst. Mm-hmm. It's like your dick was being put in a <laughs> vice. I fucking hate that feeling. And I'm bringing it up now. In a I'm, vice? It's like a. Yeah. How big is your dick, dude? It's not that big. Hold on, because if it's, it's not like I'm sleeping with a boner. Like it'll like. No, but when your dick's re- okay. when it's like not now we're when I don't size. have a boner. Okay, well, if I'm wearing a condom and I don't have a boner, it's not tight. It's just uncomfortable. It's super uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't. It is tight. I mean, what are you talking about? It's no, totally tight. No, it's not like oh, it's not like a fucking vice grip, but it's you know, it's like you wake up and it's like oh my god, like you have right. this and I'm a condom be, on your. So I'm gonna be completely honest now. I haven't worn a condom in. Four and a half, five oh, years. So you have no idea what we're talking about then. I don't remember what hey, they don't feel know. like. You don't remember. You don't remember. This is weird. Yeah, no, it's just like a vice. <laughs> it's like a fucking vice grip. It's Dude, awful. I just realized I haven't had a condom on. You're lucky. I fucking hate condoms. Mel and I never wear condoms. But like she was always on birth control. Yeah, I fucking hate condoms. I hate them. I'm pretty surprised they haven't figured out a way around that one. <sighs> this is the thing. There isn't a way. There isn't you need a, way. a barrier. Plain and simple. But it's like, could they could they find a better material? No. Really? What else was there? Sheepskin? No, no, no. I'm talking about like. Okay. Imagine this. <laughs> this might be for you engineers out there that want to make a billion Listen dollars. Up, this is an idea. You know how they have chocolate dipped, uh, um, chocolate dipped dick dipped ice latex. cream cones. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm saying. You have this thing. It's like a, a solution. Okay. All right. You know, like it's like a candle wax type right. solution. Sort I'm of with stuff. you. I'm with you. You open it up. You you dip your dick in it, mm-hmm. and it's a perfect formed f- organic fit that gives a layer of protection between you and the other person, but with no sort of like it's an absolute perfect mold. Of you can your, even put your balls in it. Yeah. Sure. Tell me that's not a better invention than a condom. Condoms are just fucking. They're terrible, awful. Dude. Dude, We've been using the them worst. for like forty years. They're so. Somebody fucking, fucking bad. upgrade that. Tell me, like, I. It, tell there me is a new that, one. Have you seen the new one? There tell is a new me one. that the idea that I just had right now wouldn't be fucking way better. Dude, there is a new one. There is a new okay. thing. Have what you Have it? you been listening to Dan Savage's podcast lately? Shout out to Dan Savage. All you listen. Dan out there. Savage. Go listen to Dan Savage. He's you awesome. bad motherfucker. He's fucking. He's a bad dude. All right, so Dan, he was talking about it in his podcast, and I looked it up. All right, so it's like weird new condom where you you just put like this weird rubbery tip thing just on the tip of your penis, like all it does is literally just, that's it. That's it. It just blocks sperm. That's basically all it does. So Which defeats the whole purpose of a condom. Yeah, because uh, you're still gonna get STDs. And I don't stuff, wear a probably, condom right? because I'm scared of having children. I will have an abortion if that's the case. I wear condoms because I don't want STDs. You don't want, yeah, you don't want a fucking <laughs> yeah. disease on you. Yeah, no, like that's that's the whole point of a condom. It's not to stop having kids. That that shit can be taken care of. <laughs> this is America, all right? You got morning after pill. I got all that shit. It's true. I have zero fear of having children. But they are they're they're figuring out these diseases like remarkably quickly. What about that fucking permanent that that killer gonorrhea? Do you remember reading about that? What's going on with that? That uncurable gonorrhea, I think it was. Like, it was like some new, Dude, let's look at like, shit terrifying. Like, it made me not want to have sex for like two days. Let's go uncurable. The 
uh, I think it was gonorrhea. gonorrhea. Rogan was talking about it. Yeah, no, I remember exactly what you're talking about. Hits North American shores. January. Oh, there 9th. it is. I don't know. There's there's not been uh, news on this lately. Oh, June tenth. Okay. Oh. Well, let's see what's going on. Uh, it says it likely started in San Francisco. Of course it did. Fucking freaks. Last year we Fucking talked about syphilis. Freaks. <laughs> syphilis being on the rise in San Francisco and across the country. New antibiotic resistance strains of the clap were making headlines too. Dude, you can see how if you just read script all day, you would develop a uh, cadence. I'd murder myself. You know? But that's why it happens. Yeah, like that's what the, I'm saying. the strip club DJ and radio voice. Now, welcome to the stage. Yeah. We have Charlotte. We have Sugar Tits. Web. <laughs> Dude, where'd that come from? I don't even know. Charlotte's Web? But, it's uh, a children's cartoon. Yeah, I know, but like, where'd that come from in my memory? Like, Charlotte's Web lives in my memory somewhere. And that came up when I was talking about a stripper. strippers. What's going on with you, Godfield? WTF. All right. It's a good podcast. So, uh, so, yeah, if you just read script all day, you'd start to sound like a douchebag. And that's probably why, like, a lot of people are, like, in old today, school media. With today's like news. Right. All right. I can uh, do that voice. It's bad. Do that voice. It's bad. It's a bad thing. It's going on with this uncurable gonorrhea. Um, uh, pre existence. Uh, we can talk about sex a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's what's more, going on in your life because you're yeah. having a lot of sex. I think you I'm blooming right now. Are in your sexual prime. I'm blooming. You're gonna want to remember this. So if you were talking to your future self right now, who what yeah. would you tell him well, the, about like what's going on right now? Because well, it might not get any better ever. You're right. Future Sad. self, uh, 38 <laughs> year old Alec. Okay, you're 38 now. Hopefully you've done some things. You might be homeless. Who knows? <laughs> but if you're listening to this. <laughs> Oh man, good job. No, no, it's uh, it's. I was telling no, but tell them what it was like right now. Oh, it's it's going down. It's it's young women. It's going down. I hate using this word because it makes me sound. No, I'm not gonna. No, radical openism, bro. Radical openness, like these awesome young women, for whatever reason, allow you to be inside them. And it's a great thing. That's an awful description. Is it? Try again. Why is it awful? No, it's it's great. Like it's fucking. It's like I was telling you before. You just said that these wonderful young women allow you to be inside them. Yeah. I wasn't talking about the particulars. Like, your future self is going to know what sex feels like. Oh. He's probably going to be more interested in, like, where your head was at with all this. Oh. Well, it's just weird for me, man, because I was raised super religious. I was... So were you. Right. We were both born and raised thinking it's... I don't know about you. Yeah, guys, this like, is what your future is self wants to this hear. Is what, this is what he wants to hear. He wants to hear uh, this stuff. My perception on sex has just changed literally like a, a week ago after doing Watch Huma and like after like really thinking about things. All, for the longest time all growing up was sex is bad. It's a sin. You're a, ba- you're a bad person for wanting to masturbate. Like you're any sort of biological necessity or release is you're broken. You need to pray it away. That's... And just like recently, finally out of my head. So ow, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm like a wolverine, like a honey badger, just let out of a cage in front of a group of ducklings. I'm gonna fuck these ducklings up. Like, ah, it's awesome. It's the best feeling in the world. It's being free. You okay? No, I spilled some, um, G- spilled some JD on you. You look, you look scared. <laughs> you scared me though a little bit. I yeah. will be honest. Yeah. Um, you sound angry. Is no, your future self going to remember this being like, yeah, I was taking shit out on, on these cunts? <laughs> don't is say that. Like, no, I'm not angry like, at all. No part of me is angry. There's no, it's, uh, if anything, I'm competitive now. Now I'm, gonna, now I'm competitive. Now I'm like, oh, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's do it a lot. Like, let's fucking all right. be good at this. Behind you, there's that Art of sedu- Sexual Ecstasy book. That's his book. I, do you think that the, what you're talking about right now is in this book? My, uh, my, just my way. aggressive, just fucking nailing at it. Yeah, I've been getting pretty aggressive in, in like in bed, dude. Um, I don't think. I think you're in a transition phase. Mm-hmm. It's definitely like you win a belt level up. Yeah, but I think like you still don't know like brown belt. 
Like, oh no. Or a black belt. If you were to ask like, me, like it's right not now really where I'm at. about. No. It's not really about time. I'm a, I'm a blue belt. Or I'm a blue belt. I'm a brand new. I'm a white belt. Like it's I'm not, really a white belt. No, you like you were a white belt, and I think and now you went to blue belt. All right, yeah. But I'm still caught in that. I'm thinking, and not to say I'm any higher either, but, but I'm you're like better reading than me. this book. You're better than me. Well, I've got ten years on you. That's what I'm saying. So I ha- I would say the best sex ever is not like when you're. <laughs> it's a competition. Not when you're like treating it like a fucking workout. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're, no, you're right. It it tends to be like when it's like, fu- like is puzzle it, pieces. Is it opening your trust? Uh, you that trust shit. Though. But uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> a heart to heart connection with your partner is established so that you can feel safe, and protected it's, before engaging in high sex. It's true. Together, you learn it's how stupid. to create the heaven of sacred space. It's stupid, you. but it's true. <laughs> it's stupid, but it's true. No, it it's is. like. It it's not just like who wrote this? Shout out know, to probably to somebody Margo, who obsesses about that shit. Margo Anid for writing the art of sexual ecstasy. Go pick it up. The course of enhancing uh, pleasure and deep and deepening intimacy. I could read. You do me. Yo, but she probably writes about the shit all the time. Thinks about this twenty four seven. Is it a woman? I don't know. Him, me, her, whatever. I, I you know it's let's uh it's nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm, I'm because I'm so new to. I'm really, I'm so new to sex. Like, especially. it's almost like you've discovered uh, working out, like a new way to enjoy it. Yeah. No. Well, the thing is, I'm enjoying it. I have no guilt anymore. It's gone. Right. Guilt is gone. Yeah. It's the best feeling in the world. So when you eliminate guilt and you take a, an aggressive young man who has done nothing, literally for years since I was 14, all I've been doing now since 14 now. Is a combination of, of mixed martial arts training and weight training. You take that aggro young guy, remove the guilt surrounded by the most biological necessity, you're going to get an aggro guy. You're going to get like an aggressive sexual partner. <laughs> like it's it. Well, yeah, and it's also realizing that that's, you can do that too. Yeah. It's just, it's broadening your horizon. I'm learning. Yeah, totally. I'm a newbie. I'm a new yeah. guy. You'll be that guy. Pretty fucking great. You'll be you that know, guy that just fucking just crushes it. Um, I don't want to be like I'm not much of like that a hookup dude or anything. I'm but not good at that do you, at all. Do you think porn stars are like? Um, do you think they really like their job? Do you think it's like a good thing for them in the long run? Do you think they're just like they're built to bang random people over and over? And then and then on top of that, do they have any sort of uh, personal sexual relationship independent of their professional job? Yes. I've heard porn stars talk a lot about having their partners and whatnot. But I, I hear them say it. I'm not. <laughs> this is the thing. I, again, I'm not a porn star. I know nothing about the industry. I am a fucking observer, right? So I'm going to make a disclaimer now. But I think if, when someone makes the decision to be a porn star, I think you make a sacrifice. I think sex is never going to be the same, I don't think. I think it's like the idea of having an intimate moment. It's. I feel like it's almost kind of destroyed (laughs) like i do i I, but what do i know like i don't know but this is my guess i think you you how could it be that intimate exactly like even if you're with a person whom you love i think one of the most intimate things you could do is have sex with somebody and if you make it right and it's not like like some triathlon like i'm talking about like it's a real intimate moment is that even still attainable if you're a fucking porn star like you fuck for hours on end week day by day seems scary i wouldn't want to do that plus my dick's not big enough I don't think it, I don't know. There's, some, there's a lot of porn stars that do not have giant wangs. A lot. I feel like it helps, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. I bet if you did a study, it wouldn't be as surprising as you think. I bet it would be a little bit above average. No, no, no. I mean, I'm getting I th- fucking drunk, dude. <sighs> yeah, we're getting drunk. <sighs> dude, are you really trying to finish this bottle? Because I'm not even kidding. By the end of it, like, I'll be dying. Can't do that. We're going to drink a lot. <sighs> we're going to drink a lot. And then we're going to go watch. Our girl Ronda Rousey. What time's that? I don't know. Sit on someone's face. Um, <laughs> God damn it! Probably be like eight. Dude, what's up? Yeah, that's fine. See what? Put the book down. You're not even reading it. You're not. Even, <laughs> I'm looking at the photos. Where's Jake right now? Call young Jake. All right. See if he got laid. Okay. He'll be the first person on the phone via podcast. 
dude, he might still be with her, and that's why he hasn't called me yet. Because normally he probably would. I think so. Young Jake. Your call has been forwarded. Oh, Jake. I think he's. I think he's banging. Is he getting laid right now? Is that what's so happening? I think it's happening? I'm gonna call him. Oh, he's not gonna answer. Dude, if he answers, how funny would that be? He'd be upset. I would legitimately be upset. He'd be upset. No, I wouldn't actually. I just forgot about it. <laughs> Jake's getting banged. Jake's getting laid. Sorry. He would have picked up. He would have picked up. He always picks up. I've been texting him all throughout the week. Homeboy's never not on his phone. He's always on his phone. He fucking loves his phone. Oh, is that him? Jake Fields. Answer it. Put it on speaker. Up right. Jake. What's up? You are live on the podcast right now. On air, buddy. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, right, yeah. No. Right now. Yeah, you can. Um, he's sitting on a lady's couch. And yeah, you can. From a lady's couch. And you're doing it. Whose couch? What are we talking about? <laughs> can you hear Alex? What's the topic? Right now? Top topic Wait, is what? sex. No, what, yeah, what are you guys talking we were talking about, about sex. We were talking about sex. We were talking about we were what talking constitutes about white belt, blue belt, brown belt, black belt, purple oh, belt. Sex? Forgot the purple yep. belt. Yeah. I'm a black belt. I believe it. Clearly though. That's not. A, no. <laughs> <laughs> like the black belt would never answer that way. <laughs> you may be, you may be high level purple belt, but the real black belt would never answer. There's like no that. answer. Never. There's no answer. Never. Well, tell me, tell me that if he was just asking like, about. She will, she will tell you live on the podcast. Put her on. Who is this? All right. Um, Ask. Tell her real quick though, if she has a career. Yeah. That she's risking it by. <laughs> By going oh. on this in any way, because oh, it's good. This is this is yeah. going on. No names on the podcast. No names. Yeah, let's no hope. No names. Uh, so I think <laughs> she can answer a question better than me. Um, she said she's not gonna talk to you. Yeah, she shouldn't. Smart. <laughs> like, she was, shouldn't fucking. Talk I was to trying you. to say that in the first place. Yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> you you could get fired. That's a that's a purple belt move there, Jake. Right, I gotta go. Fucked up. Yeah, hi. All right. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, Talk fun. to you later, man. <laughs> I'll listen to the podcast when it's finished. We know you will. All right. See you, man. Oh, young Jake. So, yeah. Are your questions answered? Yeah, young Jake's a purple belt. He's good. He's got tricks. But you'd never answer like that. No, you're right. Young Jake's a purple belt. You're the right. Real, though. true level. Blue belts are still aggressive. They don't know what, quite what to do. They're super <laughs> aggro. They just want to go for it. Purple belts are generally like super fancy, like way too fancy because they fucking learn the moves. Dude, Brown belts like I'm coming like down. This. No, I think I think you're thinking about it all the wrong way right now. I'm thinking about like jujitsu. Yeah, it's exactly how I'm thinking about it. I don't think it works like that. Oh, everything works like jujitsu. I don't think like that's true either. <laughs> Finish your drink, Kyle. Dude, what are you doing? What do you mean, dude? What are you, what are you doing today? What are you doing today? You're doing nothing. I'll be throwing up later. Yay. <sighs> Turning meatloaf up. Yeah, have a lot. Have a lot I love of some meatloaf. Eat it. Delicious. Kyle gave me meatloaf. It's really good. So. Fuck. <laughs> this is what happens when you get fucking hammered. This is stupid. I'm enjoying myself. You ever see Duncan Trestle's Drunk History? No. But that sounds awesome. Really? Yeah, I haven't seen it. All right, pull up. I'm gonna eat this meatloaf. You're gonna pull up. 
Drunk history. Oh. Uh, drunk history. Duncan Trussell. Look it up on YouTube. See if you can get it, um, get to play, play as loud as you can. This is where we're going, by the way. Drunk and Trussell drank a six pack of beer and had a ball in the bathroom. We're going here? You don't have to read it out loud. I'll put it in. I'll put it up on post. We're going here? What? We're going here? Today. This is what's happening to us. Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was the father of Western technology. Where everything we know is like modern He's drunk electricity. Right now. Tesla invented that. Oh yeah. He also invented wireless technology. Like where we're going. Radio. Supposedly one day he was taking a walk in a park and he suddenly experienced this tremendous yeah, flash a little bit lower. of so light. it shows up in your hand. He saw in his mind the perfect blueprint of an engine that would create something called alternating current. And that was when he was like, I have to go to the United States to meet Edison. I'll meet Edison. So Tesla sailed across the ocean, found Edison, who at the time was like the king of electricity. Edison and was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess you you can work for me. And his job was like his job was digging like ditches for Edison. And from this guy Westinghouse, like gave him money to uh, start like working on his idea of alternating current. So Edison didn't like the idea of alternating current because he owned all the patents on direct current, alternating current was the only <laughs> too strong. <laughs> I can't do it. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking fell. This is where we're going, dude. Let's start puking. Yeah, dude. Where we're going. I'm sorry, you're really fucking drunk, Tesla man. Tesla won the contract to supply yeah, all, all the electricity to the world's fair. And this pissed Edison off. He was like, fuck this. Uh, alternating current is bad. Alternating current will only cause massive deaths. And so he started this campaign to prove that alternating current was like the worst current you could use. What he did is he began to like publicly electrocute animals. Edison was an asshole. He was like taking like sheep and being like, look what happens when the sheep touches the alternating current. <laughs> oh, it, blo it gets electrocuted. Look what happens look when a cow comes in contact with the alternating current. It dies tesla was horrified <laughs> and he'd be like this is awful i am inventing electricity and you look like an asshole you look like a fucking idiot i'm gonna throw up i can't do it good good night thank you everyone tesla uh discovered the energy to run the world fair. Oh, and at God. that moment, Tesla became an international Don't figure. Know. What? Worshipped by everyone. So, we do. Tesla uh, had like God. a laboratory. Fuck. And like, Anybody? Mark Twain no. and like everybody who was famous in the world would come to the laboratory. So, we'd like do things like make electricity, shoot around his body. Pee. People would be watching, like, look at him, he's on fire. Mark Twain would be there crying. The new idea was that I don't think you necessarily need to have like power plants for there to be electricity. I think that you can take electricity from the air. This was directly opposed to uh, all of capitalist society. So he was basically ostracized from society. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, he missed the toilet. How did this come out of my body? There are pieces, there's pineapple pieces. 
Like, I know I chewed it. He went crazy, you know? But his greatest pleasure as he was getting still all talking. was feeding pigeons. And he fell in love with a specific pigeon. <laughs> what an asshole. As he was dying, I guess he was in this hotel room, and uh, a pigeon appeared. And from its eyes, this light glowed that was brighter than any light that he'd ever seen. And he knew that he would never invent anything worthy of a pigeon. He was 84, and he died in a hotel, completely broke and alone, uh, in love with a pigeon. This is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm in hell. This is hell. I'm talking about Tesla in my puke. Tesla was the electric Jesus. We should, we've been recording this whole time. Is that what that the camera? Yeah, it's awesome. Don't worry. This is gonna be a video somehow. I might edit it down because there's a lot of nonsense. In here. There's a lot of stuff that does but, not need to be on. But the I internet. might have some sort of progression of us. From not fucked up to fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, some sort of timeline of nonsense talk. Hey everybody, this is a podcast. It's not going to be aired. We're drunk now. We're drunk. At this point, I'm not. Tr I'm trying not to vomit. Really? Are you that yeah. drunk? Yeah. Kyle feels. What happened to you? I got. I drank a lot. I don't do this much. Really. No, uh, am I an alcoholic? You. No, you're just young. <laughs> like you can do it more than. I drink a lot, dude. I was thinking about that. Like I have to go to a doctor soon, and I know they're gonna ask me how much I drink. And it's, I'm just gonna home a lot. What was the thing? I remember like I it's remember like thinking, ten drinks a night. Yeah, I know. I remember thinking like you know when you go to the doctor and they're like how many drinks do you have a week and it's like you have to pull out a calculator. <laughs> yeah, I'm like <laughs> like right now if a doctor were to ask me, that's what I'm, I'm like, and you're like. This is way past the worst. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> like, I'm gonna look like, at him. This is like not I'm, even close. Like dude. just during the week, you not don't even have a category for me. Not even including, not including the weekends. I probably have fifty drinks a week. Yeah, not including. The I weekends. think it's like 100 the weekends percent consistent yeah. with my experience at your age. Mm. But I'm telling you, Alec. Like I'm. <laughs> I'm trying. I remember being your age yeah. with people telling me this exact same thing and thinking, whatever. What were you, what were you gonna say, buddy? Dude, it fucking gets really hard as you get older. I don't know Drink, why. Drinking. Yeah, the drinking. ten years. Yeah. The ten years. Mm. <sighs> Dude, the the hangover gets epic. Like is it, it just, really? For me, this is my experience. Like just gradual pain and oh. at this point like i'm fucking not gonna be able to do anything tomorrow i'm already telling <laughs> you like like mark you if you, i don't know if you want to hang out tomorrow yeah, or do any it. well not gonna not because i'm not, probably not gonna leave the bed like i'm happening. probably just gonna be like really oh yeah like we're going to a fight after this yeah we're like gonna watch i'm a fight. fucking drunk yeah we're gonna dude. watch a fight. so like by the time like the fight's over we're i'm gonna be, be like gonna be i'll hammered. thrown up twice yeah, yeah i'll be in the bed yeah. i won't move tomorrow i'm sorry mel yeah, I mean, Mel will probably have to give me an a just to keep me like. Oh, coherent. does she have those? Oh, yeah, she awesome. hides them. <laughs> she <laughs> You're like she hides them. <laughs> That's so awesome. She hides them. Mel's IVs. That crazy They're around bitch. here. My crazy bitch. Look for them. We'll have to edit this out. Oh yeah, it's loud. We can't like say my fiance. Ah, <laughs> uh, place. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is so that was like a hundred percent commitment to this is getting cut. No, yeah, it's gone. It's yeah. gone. Bye. We're, like this isn't gonna be a fully live. No, this but, episode is gonna be like fifteen think, minutes long. But I do think the way that we do it is like we just cut to like this the progression. You know what we do? Of fucking this is drunk. what we do. This is what we do. I have an idea. I have an idea. Go with me with the scoffers. Right. So tomorrow, you're gonna be fucked because yeah. you're just saying you're hangover. Yeah. You can be vicious. This is what we do. We record a mini video tomorrow, like okay. two minutes yeah. long. Something. Me and you sitting on a couch. You're hungover with an ice bag on your head. And I'm sitting and there. Sunglasses on in the dark. I'm sitting there <laughs> drinking a beer because that's what I'm going to be doing. I have a beer in my head. And we're going to be like, listen. 
<sighs> we made a podcast for you guys this week, but <laughs> we got drunk. Here's the progression. It's not going out there. Steps one through ten. So you get 15 minutes of chaos. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the video. It would be funny. Like, and that's you, the way we do it. You don't say a word. You no. Just, yeah. You're like, yep. <laughs> <And then you're done. laughs> That's the way we do it. God damn, we are fucking savages. Yeah, like I get I guess I got drunk last night, but I feel fine. Like this is the most you'll ever remember from a day of drinking. <laughs> mm, yeah. Dude, my because uncle, it'll be on video. Think about it. Yeah, it's gonna be up. That's what I mean. My uncle, he's forty two. Yeah. One, two, whatever. It's old. He's fucking old. He <laughs> when he so think of what you're at pain wise. Yeah. And then another ten years. Oh yeah. He's t- he do I I used to live with him before he got like engaged. Whatever the fuck is going on. Before he lived with his female. He he would get drunk just once and he would be gone for like three days. Three days he would call off clients. It would be like a Monday. Oh, you're on deeper, Kyle. Oh, dude, right. cross that line. Yeah, you're Remember gone. Remember that line we Let's were talking it. about at the beginning of the podcast? The line's gone. I just crossed the line, you just got- and <laughs> you should be afraid, because I am. Yeah, I'm good. I live in this. <laughs> I live in this line. This is, where, this is where I'm comfortable. Oh, my God. Pass it. I'm pouring. Fuck it. Just pass it. No need caps. Jesus. <laughs> Fun fact. This might stay in the podcast. This is not even my Jack Daniels. I took this from somebody. Somebody. I took this from a very friendly gay man I met last night. His name is Mike, it, Mikey. Doesn't it make you sad a little bit when you realize, like the the professionals, the grown ups, mm-hmm. they'll never remember. They won't get to enjoy a lot of fun in life, which Sorry. is like what we're doing right now. No, yeah. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> like. Like, uh, like Warren Buffett, <laughs> like, he doesn't get to have any more fun. Yeah, you know you're fucked. Like, like a Bill Gates type character. Bill Gates, like you know, I mean, you don't get to fucking. <laughs> no, those people fucked up. Be a child, like, well, like how many opportunities does Bill Gates get anymore to like? He's done, dude. Smoke fucking weed, done. play he's, video games. He's internationally recognized. <laughs> like, he's do done. Podcasts. Yeah, like he get, can't just, get get drunk. He can't be a kid on a Thursday with your friends <laughs> and like just fucking What's talk today? nonsense, today, dude. Today is the or 5th the thrill. Of July. Wait, how he will never understand the thrill, the thrill of getting a hundred subscribers to your YouTube channel. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he'll never understand that. Like that sort of difficulty, that sort of struggle. Yeah. Is that who's that? Which just, one's that? I just got this. What is that? The girl that wants to come visit this weekend. A different one? Yeah. Whoa. It's like mating calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like That's the message. That's it. That and the photo. <laughs> this Whoa. is why I'm still blue belt. Dude, Stack. but like life is fucking just giving you rewards. It's so up and good right. right now. I can't. I can't. I'm gonna be braggadocious, and this is not gonna make the final cut. Let's, so I can feel let's say just it. not but make. Dude, the final I'm in cut. such a good fucking position right now. I really am. I'm. You're so vibrating grateful. on a badass level. I'm on you this know what you should do? Fucking high frequency. Do this because I've thought about this, wishing I'd have done this. When you're feeling the best version of yourself, write down in as great detail as possible every aspect of the things that you are doing with yeah. your life. Like, what is it right now? Because there's a recipe. Give me your laptop. You know what I mean? Can I use your laptop? Really yeah, of course. Wait, no. We're recording shit on there. Don't give me There's laptop. a lot of shit going on. Don't on give this. me your laptop. Do you need to just write notes? Is yep. that what you're doing? I want to write notes. Yeah. Okay. Open that up. And then go to... Uh, my email to myself. Notes. Boom. And just start writing shit down because this is uh this is huge, like there's there seems to be like a method to the madness where you can you can figure out the combination of things in your life that leads to you being fucking optimized. Oh, yeah. You know, like your A plus level. I'm gonna write this down and you're gonna read it. It's gonna be quick. Like, yeah, yeah. It needs to be like everything, everything you can think of, everything that could potentially make any sort of difference. The amount of 
sleep, food, training, water, love, friendship, hangouts, drinking weed, drinking weed, psychedelics, <laughs> meditation, whatever. Drinking like, weed. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, right? I do. Like, do you need to find out what the formula is? Because life is, if life really is in that best case scenario right now, it won't be forever. And then you'll want to adjust it back to the best case scenario again. You know what I'm saying, bro? I don't know what you're saying, bro. Yeah, so write love shit down. right now. You just write that shit down. Um, I think I did it. What? I, I did it. I think I'm done. Really? One. Ready? Three, four, five, five Let's things. See. Five by five. Five things. Five things. Very simple. I need to remember. Work out. Lots of squats. Honest and humble. I think like be honest Same thing. about we. Yeah. Same thing. Honest and humble. I'm gonna change your face. Change it. <laughs> <laughs> the weakness portion essentially means humbleness. Yep. Uh, fear nothing game. Yeah. Yes. You know what it is? It's just taking any of it too seriously. Yeah. This is all a video game. You know what I fucking saw, Kyle Fields, on fucking Watch Humor? I saw the interconnections that curates everything that is our universe. I saw the framework that curates existence. At this point, nothing scares me anymore because I've seen the universe bare bones. Nothing scares me. Religion doesn't scare me. Sex doesn't scare me. Nothing scares me right now. And it's fucking freeing. It's amazing. Nothing bothers me anymore. The idea of work, to like I, was, I used to be terrified of training people. I don't give a fuck anymore. Now I'm writing programs. One of my fucking professors is an online stu- uh, client now. Like I, nothing bothers me. You need to, there, this is all fake. It's fucking fake. It's, there's nothing to fear. Everything is a fucking game. And once you reach to that point, that zinth, and you realize that you are free, you are God. You are a god. And that's something people need to fucking remember. Like, everyone knows I need control. You live on a spinning ball of chaos. There's no control. It's gone. You live in an infinite universe surrounded by nuclear explosions that provide you with energy and oxygen. There is no such thing as safety at all. The fact that you could even theorize what you are is fucking incredible. It's palpable even. So why be scared of that hot girl at the end of the bar? Doesn't make sense. Just fucking do it. Cool. That's it. That was beautiful. That's it. That's did, you, it. did you dip into the Dow right now? I think right I did. There? I think I went deep. You just, I don't know what's happening. I blacked out. Deep, I blacked out. But you just like, yeah, you blacked out. You were just <laughs> fucking rolling. I'm gone. You just expelled just pureness. But that's how I feel right now. What's true? And it's because it's I gave up what I thought made me. And Matters. once you get to that point, all yeah. two of our listeners, you will monster can 85 on <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> You will reach the zenth, and once you get there, you're never gonna want to leave. Do you think that's what's? I mean, like, (laughs) (laughs) holy shit! Did I just have my? You go fear nothing. This is all a game. No mixed drinks. Yeah, no mixed drinks. (laughs) Whiskey only. Beer and whiskey. That's our golden rule. (laughs) And do drugs. Uh, That's beautiful. But that's the thing, man. Like, I I, you know, was that my first real rant? Was that my first real rant? Well, that was what's called dipping into the Dow of life. Just letting it flow but through. That's you. what it is, man. Uh, that's the ether. God, I'm living in the now right now. And that's, I think that's the only, like, I think that's why some people, like girls right now in particular, are attracted to me. Cause I'm super honest about my weaknesses. I'm super honest about the things that I love. And I try to be genuine with all things. And I think that's why you're my friend. That's why people like Mel are my friend. That's why we have Emily and Rudy in our lives. We have all these non conventional, crazy people. As our Do you ever think uh, this idea, it. this is like an Alan Watts idea. Bring it on, Watts. Can you imagine Fuck. anything else? Ooh. No. Then why wouldn't you think that you're the one curating it? That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you are what you want it to be. Right. Because you literally couldn't imagine... What else could and, you and that's why we're such huge proponents of these things like drugs, because drugs, quote unquote drugs, psychedelics. They seem to make you realize what, that. It makes it obvious. I'm telling you, I saw Dude. what makes the universe last weekend. I came back a different human. 
I got in the tank two weeks ago. I saw you were an energy I, beam. I hung outside. I, I lived in the realm of nothingness, looking at the realm of somethingness as if it was some sort of a like entertaining technology. You know, like like looking at my life and looking at this as if it was some sort of like way to occupy infinity. Like mm. it it. it it, I saw it as the joke that it was. Like you're, you're as, the galaxy entertaining I saw itself. It as, yeah, I was. I, I was in a galaxy entertaining. It's yes, yes. That's a perfect example. It's almost like playing costume, playing dress up, like having an experience that you could only experience given these conditions. And like the potential for those are infinite, and time doesn't exist. And you are this like this sort of like higher level thing playing a, uh, an infinite game with itself and just like seeing how it plays out and then doing it again and then seeing how it plays out and then doing it again. And then there's all these little loopholes in the game when you can take a pause. Yeah. <laughs> you can be like, oh, I'm going to go back and see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. It's called going back going back in. Going in. and it's <laughs> and like you once you realize that like the the realities of the things that matter and that are infinite and that are, we really are are so silly. It's like so this dumb. this this is so silly. This is as silly as like losing a life in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> like this is as wasted. Silly. It is. <laughs> like the whole point was like have fun. We we seem to be occupying infinity. Like that's that's we're occupying yeah. time. We're keeping ourselves we're, interested. Even we're, with us, yeah. As trainers, like yeah. our jobs aren't very. So crew. even we, within we busy within this life, like if you have a Sims character, a World of Warcraft character that yeah. you're very invested in, I was a you, conqueror. You want him to be good, yeah. Right, I was a but you also don't really give a shit about like his weaknesses or no. like like you're you're just trying you know to like, make him better. That's exactly what it was. You're trying to make him better. You didn't have I didn't have a fucking complex no. about my character's <laughs> insecurities. No. So why the fuck would I have any about so, my like, own? Yeah. So when you go into these realms and they're like fucking pay attention, man. Seriously, yeah. I'm trying to make you better because I want you to be better. Yeah, like you're I like I'm not hung up on the details. It's like I'm all right. All right. I got 20 seconds to try to. Explain what you need to do listen to me it's all a game do whatever you want yeah. like try go quit everything loves you do whatever you want make it infinity go oh. and like <laughs> during those experiences like that seems to be the message it's like this really fast sort of download of instructions of it's yeah. not that hard not. like stop tricking yourself you're actually supposed to you, have fun you haven't talked it's about a this. good time but during your trip your your one psychedelic and your second psychedelic experience your your mushrooms you you wept you wept at the simplicity of life yeah you had a low take i saw it happen. you get a fucking i watched my download. friend i watched my brother get better and he sat with two dachshunds on a very comfortable pet animal bed and just watched life get easier for him he went from legendary mode the hard mode in halo to easy you're like oh okay sort of yeah i get this yeah it's it's a it's a it's a hero's journey you know they as they say like it's that step into the unknown realization it's okay and like coming back and realizing like it's not as big a deal as we're making it you gotta be getting caught up on like the simplicity of this the purpose of this and the purpose of this is to experience it's to fucking have it's to have a wide array of experience. That's where religious people fuck up. That's where they fuck up because if you tell them that, that life is, is simply whatever you want it to be and it boils down to what you make of it and hopefully it's love and happiness. If you tell them that, they're mad. They're <laughs> very fucking mad. How dare because you? Because the world is bad. It's so bad and right. everything's evil and Satan runs the world. Right. And like, how? no, God's going to, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to save the day. We're going to be angels. And we're going to be like, no, dude. No. I'm sorry. Your story's bullshit. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. It. Like, it, yeah, I'm it's leaning just towards that bullshit. I think what, 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 I, what I find the problem with that thinking is that, not even what they're thinking. Because I like, like we talk about all the time. I I'm very open minded. I'm not very sure of myself. I don't have I don't I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. But you know what the problem dude, you're gonna fall over. Okay. You got this. But the problem is is the problem is that they are so sure of themselves. Yeah, it's that it's that 
it's that confidence of arrogance is what it is. This, it's I know the answer. And, there's, and this is the thing. If Jesus, no shit. I'm if not Jesus, telling you you're wrong. No. I'm telling you, you don't know that you're right. Right. You're right. And you're like, seriously, if Jesus were to come down right now in front of your window and come to save the day, I wouldn't be opposed to it. <laughs> like, no, like, me oh, neither. I would be like, oh, cool. Like, holy shit. You just made things a lot simpler for us. So it was you. Cool. <laughs> oh like, God. yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> seriously. Because that's what, that's what we would do. We'd be like, Our first answer like, would be like, wow. Oh. Shit. We fucked so up. So you were doing it. Neat. Okay. Okay. That's it. That That's our response. Yeah. And that would be great. Because you'd be like, oh, let's explore the universe right. with Jesus. Right. And we'd be happy. But. If you come at me with, oh, you're you're gonna go to hell, young man, because you masturbate, and but like, you think, like, but don't what? you think, Alec? Don't you think that if the, if Jesus fucking floated down in front of their window, mm. like these lifetime going to church Christian men, if Jesus floated down right in front of their window, I still think that they would go, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they would still be part of them. Like, still surprised. They would just be like, no fucking way i didn't know that was real. no way i was doing that to fucking fit in yeah, yeah. with this group you're telling like, me that's actually what's going on for real no, s- where is it like Kyle. us 70. who aren't christian no not but i think would be much we were. quicker to be like Neat. well goddamn cool <laughs> <laughs> you know like you would, we say, just, like, you would like, say well goddamn yep. to jesus yeah we'd be just like, well look at that huh all right like we'd just be real quick to be like, well, yeah. I knew he wasn't white. <laughs> Called it, Call it. <laughs> whatever. No, 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 but like we, yeah, we're like just it. we. I think we're very open to. Yes, we are accepting truth as well as we are to like re- repulsing lies. <laughs> like, well, if we were repulsing, if we were, we wouldn't do these fucking chaotic drugs. I wouldn't go on a thirteen-hour yeah. adventure where, I, at one point during my trip. I was like, I don't know if this is gonna end. <laughs> like that, that's, a, that's a thought, thought that came across my that's, head. That's what usually leads to like Panic really attacks. bad trips. Well, I remember saying that. Times. I remember looking at the shaman, and be like, I don't feel like this is gonna end ever. He goes, Well, he was like, Well, the medicine's gonna be in you forever. These lessons will never leave. But uh, you just went really deep, buddy. Give it some time. Like he was calming, nice guy. He was right. The lessons will be forever. Do you think of him as a, a trainer? Like a 100%. psychedelic. Was it like that sort of a relationship? Yeah. This is the thing. He wasn't one of those wooey, wooey shaman guys. Like, oh, I, like I'm like, I am the leader of the spirit. I those know the guys perfect are, way. Those guys are way. cunts. No, that's a cunt. That's a weak bitch. Right. That's like that personal trainer. It's like, hey, guys, all right. One rep, two reps. It's like, what are you doing? Dude? Well, the guy that's like, it's listen, fucking, what we're going to do is yeah. we're going to periodize from yeah, step gonna, one, phase gonna, one. This is what we do. Shut and the this fuck is up and lift. Three sets of 10. Yeah. And you're going to do yeah. this in opposing muscle groups into A2. And with it. Exactly. You, you shouldn't be so sure of yourself. Yeah. You Calm shouldn't your tits. like Calm your you tits, shouldn't buddy. think for a second that you actually have this right. And that's what he was like. He was <laughs> the cool guy. He was like, hey. You have to be open enough to say that like I don't have this right, but right. this is what I've seen. This so is what far. I know. This is what I know. This is what I know so far. Yeah, yeah. Just from what I've seen. His name was Mike. And I don't feel bad divulging that. That's yeah. what I'm gonna say. His name is Mike and he was very he was exactly how you would want a quote unquote shaman to be. He's like, oh, what's up, man? It's so nice to meet you. Come here, give me a hug. Like, you're, it's really nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, dude. Oh, you were very friendly. Wow. Uh, and then you know, you He's hang just out like with him. Really He's cool and friendly. Yeah. He's non-judgmental. Like, not at all. Not at all. Sounds he, like an awesome job. You start talking to him. He's like, oh yeah. Like at one point, we were talking about money. He goes, man, like I watch these shows and I'm just so curious. What do people do with a million dollars? And just looked out, forced. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want that. Like, and was sincere. I was like, you wouldn't know what to do with that. He was like, yeah, no, I mean, how much does food cost? No, I mean, it would still have like $900,000. I would I'd be fine. Like, oh my, like, this, like, all he wants to do. Yeah, but dude, we, we just talked it. about this at the beginning of the podcast. Like, the whole idea is that money is toxic at a level. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. like, like yeah, it's, our limit. Is what we dude, we never, I don't even know that we never, we never really finished that. We, we just did. said we'd never read script. Yeah, we, no, no, we said, we said we'd never read script. We'd never lie. We'd never lie. And we're never going to exceed $3,000 an episode. Which is two hundred sixteen thousand dollars a year. Wait, we should we should cut out that third part. Because <laughs> if we do the first two, 
If somebody wants to pay us more, they should be allowed to. Because we'll just... Right, but the cattle is... <coughs> All right, how about this? How about this? How about oh this? God. How is this fair? Oh, God. I know, dude. Oh, God. All right, Alec. Oh God. What if... We said anything over, anything we made over a million dollars a year uh, goes to the, you know, the Josie Dantrink Trust, <laughs> the, the Board of Directors Trust. Why is it that the same people are on both our trusts? I don't know, because we trust them. We do. Because we're good. I do trust Dan.